Take a look at your phone. Whether you have the Notch or the newer Dynamic Island, there's a hidden camera in there. And I'm not talking about your selfie camera. Most people don't realize that your iPhone actually has two front-facing cameras. One for your selfies, and another one that's quietly scanning your face throughout the day. You've probably noticed this green dot that shows up when your camera's on. But I bet you never noticed this blinking red light from the other camera. That's because we can't see it directly with our eyes. We can only see it if we look at our phone through another camera. This area of your phone houses what Apple calls their true depth camera system. And this hidden camera is an infrared camera. It's the reason you can unlock your phone with Face ID, why your screen dims when you're not looking at it, and why your face filters went from this to this. Just by looking at the camera with your naked eye, you'll never be able to tell if it's scanning your face. But I have a device that'll let us see exactly what's happening behind your screen. And there's actually a good chance that you already have one of these at home. So today we're gonna break down what exactly the infrared camera captures, how the true depth camera actually works, and answer the big question, is it a safety concern? In 2017, it had been exactly a decade since Steve Jobs' iconic introduction of the iPhone in 2007. While a lot was revolutionary about the iPhone, one feature that remains similar to other phones is how you lock and unlock the phone with a four-digit passcode. Even then, we knew that a four-digit passcode was not a foolproof way to keep your phone safe. As long as someone had your passcode, they could get into your phone. So in 2013, alongside the introduction of the iPhone 5S, Apple also introduced Touch ID. This replaced the home button with the fingerprint scanner button. According to Apple, the probability of someone being able to unlock your phone when Touch ID is enabled is one out of 50,000. In comparison, the odds of guessing a typical four digit passcode are one in 10,000. Then in 2017, with the announcement of iPhone X, Apple announces Face ID. Whether Apple's goal was to make our phones more secure or to remove the home button is unknown, but both were accomplished. With Face ID, there was no longer a need for a fingerprint scanner, which finally allowed them to make an iPhone model with an edge-to-edge -edge display for the first time. Face ID took security to a whole new level for iPhones. The odds of someone randomly unlocking your phone when Face ID is enabled is one in a million. That's 20 times more secure than Touch ID. Though there is a caveat to this number that we'll get to later. While Face ID was the star of the September 2017 event, they also introduced the tech that's enabling it, the True Depth Camera System. This is how it was introduced for the iPhone X. This notch here holds the entire camera system. In 2022, with the announcement of iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, they announced that they shrunk the True Depth Camera so that they can completely remove the notch and replace it with the Dynamic Island. I say that because I'm gonna explain how it works using the old configuration but it still works the same with the new iPhones with the Dynamic Island. It's just more compact now. First, let's start by ignoring the two features that are debatably not part of the True Depth camera system, the speaker and the microphone. These aren't necessarily special. They're just one of the few sets of speakers and microphones on the iPhone. So I'm gonna remove them from this diagram. Then we have the ambient light sensor and the proximity sensor. The ambient light sensor detects how much light is around you so it can adjust the screen's brightness accordingly. This is why your phone automatically gets brighter in the dark and dimmer in the light. The proximity sensor detects how close your face is to the phone. This is how it knows to turn your screen off as you bring your phone closer to your ear during a call. These weren't necessarily new features for the iPhone either, but now they're part of the True Depth camera system. That leaves us with our two cameras, the front camera, AKA the selfie camera, and the infrared camera. While the front camera works on its own, the flood illuminator and the dot projector are there to help support the infrared camera. The major difference between the front camera and the infrared camera is that the front camera only takes invisible light and the infrared camera only takes an infrared light. Remember, on the electromagnetic spectrum, humans can only see visible light. We can't see infrared light. Most cameras can technically see infrared light as well, but because we humans can't see it, a lot of them will have filters that block out the infrared light, including the front camera. But these infrared blocking filters aren't 100% perfect, so they can't block all infrared light especially intense infrared light, which is why most digital cameras that have these filters can still pick up the infrared lights coming from the True Depth camera system when it's close enough. The infrared camera, on the other hand, filters out visible light and captures infrared light. And if you're wondering why these two cameras can't just be combined into one that takes in both visible light and infrared light, this is because it would be harder for the processor to remove light from the image after it's already been taken. It's easier to just prevent the light from entering the camera at all. With that said, when do we use the infrared camera? The answer is all the time. For instance, 
Every time we unlock our phones with Face ID, the dot projector projects a grid of 30,000 infrared lights onto our face. If we're in a place that's too dark, the floodlight will just come on to add additional infrared light so that the infrared camera can better detect our face. The camera is then used to capture the details of our face. Because our face is anything but flat, the dots are reflected off the contours of our face in all different directions, making the dots look more stretched, compressed, and or angled. The infrared camera is able to capture an image of these distortions and send it to the iPhone's neural engine. Because it knows what the original grid pattern of the lights should look like on a flat surface, and it knows what the grid pattern looks like when it's reflected off of our faces, it's able to generate a precise 3D map of our face. It then takes a 3D map of your face and compares it to the original 3D map you created when you first set up Face ID. If they match, then your phone is unlocked. And to clarify, it doesn't actually try to compare the 3D maps themselves, but their mathematical representations. The device I use to capture the infrared lights is this indoor security camera by WISE. So if you guys have an indoor or outdoor security camera with uh, night vision, see if you can capture the infrared lights hitting your face as you're unlocking your phone. Hopping in during the edit to mention that to have the infrared light show on my face for an extended period of time, I use the Memoji feature. With Face ID, it will still show the infrared lights on your face, but only for a quick second in time. So if you want to see the infrared lights on your face in its true glory, use the Memoji feature. And I did in fact buy this camera for this video. So if you guys can help me justify my purchase by liking, commenting, subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. So there's a common misconception that the True Depth camera uses LiDAR to create 3D maps of our faces, which is likely because iPhones do use LiDAR for 3D mapping, but only in the rear camera. LiDAR, which is short for light detection and ranging, works by emitting infrared light pulses and measuring the time it takes for the light to be reflected off of a surface in return. It then uses that time and the speed of light constant to determine the depth. This technique as a whole is known as time of flight, since it's based off the amount of time the light takes to travel. LiDAR is an application of time of flight. But as I described, the True Depth camera determines depth by looking for distortions in the projected dot pattern. This depth mapping technology is called structured light. Time of flight, structured light, and stereo vision are the three main types of 3D sensing techniques. Apple introduced structured light to iPhones in 2017 with the iPhone X's True Depth camera, but time of flight via LiDAR wasn't added to the rear camera system until 2020 with the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. Apple chose structured light sensing for the True Depth camera because it can create a much more precise 3D map compared to LiDAR, making it the best choice for detailed facial mapping. But one of its downsides is that it only works effectively if the subject is around 10 to 20 inches away from the phone. LiDAR, on the other hand, can reach up to 16 feet, which makes it a better choice for the rear camera. So while both the front and rear cameras of the iPhone 12 model or newer can determine facial depth, they use two totally different techniques to do it. As I mentioned earlier, the infrared camera isn't just used for face ID, but in all of its applications, it still projects the infrared light onto your face to create a 3D map. It was originally rolled out with Memojis and then Animoji filters, which I guess were just added for fun, but it also improved AR face filters. Before the true depth camera, Apps like Snapchat would use computer vision to place filters on faces. Instead of actually measuring the depth of our face using infrared lights, it would actually use computer vision or AI to try to identify a 2D face in a video and then would infer its depth to create a 3D map. At least for iPhones, the True Depth camera could now give Snapchat the data from the infrared camera so that it could more realistically place a filter on a face. But the infrared camera is used way more often than just these scenarios. If you have attention aware enabled on your iPhone, which most iPhones do by default, the camera is constantly checking to see if your face is in front of the phone. It's the reason why when you pick up your phone, it will automatically unlock using Face ID without you even prompting it. Or it will show you a preview of a text message if it recognizes your face. If you sit down and watch one of my YouTube videos, for instance, it's what prevents the screen from turning off even if you're not actively touching your phone. And it knows to dim the screen when you're not looking at it to save battery. Attention aware was actually a little known feature until around April of 2024, when people started to complain that their alarms weren't going off in the mornings and they were showing up late to work and school because of it. Across social media, upset over sleepers sharing their experiences with alarm failures. What's been going on with the Apple alarm clocks lately? 
Apple says it is aware of an issue causing some iPhone alarms to not play the expected sound and said the company is working on a fix. Some people have said that turning off an attention aware feature has helped solve this problem. The issue turned out to be that because of attention aware, if your alarm would go off and say you pick up your phone to check the time really quick or the phone is positioned in some way where it recognizes your face, it would automatically lower your ringtone because it assumes that you're using your phone and no longer need the alarm. And there's even a Reddit post that confirms that this has been an issue even as early as 2021. It wasn't until three years later that Apple acknowledged the issue and put out a fix for it. So with all that said, is Face ID actually safe? Let's break it down. This attention aware bug with the alarm volume was annoying, but not necessarily a security risk. But then what about the 3D maps of our faces at Apple stores? If those were hacked somehow, that would cause a huge security risk for almost every iPhone owner. But it seems like Apple actually thought this through pretty carefully. The Face ID maps only live in our phone's hardware, not in the cloud or on Apple servers. So even Apple themselves can't access it. But there is one thing to be concerned about though, and that's if you have an evil twin. Remember I mentioned that there's a caveat to that one in a million probability that a random person will be able to unlock your phone when Face ID is enabled? Well, that probability falls apart if you have an identical twin or sibling that looks just like you. According to Apple, it's also less reliable for kids under 13 since their facial features are still developing and advise using a passcode instead if you're worried about your lookalike getting into your phone. So if you don't remember anything else from this video, remember this, don't let your siblings near your phone if you look alike.